Good day. Welcome. You know, it's easy to say that technology is advancing by leaps and bounds, but none more than the research done to DNA. Deoxyribonucleic acid, as it's commonly called, can aid in criminal investigations in ways it never could before. In this segment of the presentation, we will look at DNA's history, its function, and how we apply that criminologically. Not only that, but we'll see as witnesses three scenes or scenarios in which DNA has practical applications beyond anyone's expectations in present day. I'm Derek McKinnon. Please join me as we explore DNA. In 1869, nucleic acids were identified by Frederick Meitscher. He isolated these from human pus cells and salmon sperm. By 1928, the transfer of genetic material between bacteria was observed by Frederick Griffith. He saw dead pneumonia cells genetically transform other pneumonia cells to their own type. Did you know that if you took the DNA of every cell in one human body and laid it end to end, it would go from the sun to the earth 300 50 times, or about 135 billion kilometers. It's a lot of DNA. By 1950, X-ray data for DNA structure was produced by Rosalind, Rosalind Franklin and Maurice Wilkins, shown here. By 1953, James Watson and Francis Crick solved the puzzle using scale models of nucleotides. Their success depended greatly on the X-ray data done by Rosalind, Rosalind Frank and Maurice Wilkins. Watson and Crick concluded that DNA is composed of two long chains of nucleotides arranged in a spiral, shown here. This structure is the famed double helix made up of paired nitrogen bases held together by nitrogen bonds, which are guanine, cytosine, adenine, and thymine. The sequence of nitrogenous bases dictates what specific genetic information that molecule will encode, a segment of DNA that codes for the cell's synthesis of a specific protein is called a gene. Watson and Crick also noted that the bases were combined in a particular way. They discovered that adenine always pairs with thymine and cytosine always pairs with kinine. Good job, Doc. Did you also know that further contributions to the understanding of DNA Wilkins, Watson, and Crick were awarded the Nobel Prize in 1962. Sadly, however, Rosalind Frank died without any recognition of her contributions to DNA. At this portion of our presentation, we will bear witness to the practical applications of DNA. 
Earlier today, there was a home invasion where the owner was killed. The suspect then stole the owner's vehicle in 1986 Ford F-150 half-ton. The vehicle was then abandoned, but the evidence wasn't. Come with me. Little does this man realize. But such evidence as DNA has been left in the form of hair. Here we have sketch composites and some suspects. With this DNA evidence, we could put them away. Yet again, we will bear witness to the sequence of events which DNA would tell us. The story? A gruesome murder which DNA will help piece together. Beside me lay the body of a dead man, slain. Signs of struggle are evidence against the perpetrator. Let's take a closer look. I warn those faint of heart. This segment of the presentation is graphic. One particular sign of struggle, this simple butter knife used by the victim against the perpetrator. With, we presume, the blood of the perpetrator. Other signs of struggle include Footprints, bloody tracks, and on to, of course, the murder weapon, the axe used against the victim. With this evidence, and with the help of DNA, we will prosecute and convict the perpetrator. It is inevitable. Yes, yes, Jack, I agree completely. Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay, well, tell Fred I said hi. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. Well, that concludes our presentation on DNA. It's hoped that the information not only entertained, but also enlightened you to the applications of DNA in criminology today. And it's also hoped that the future is brighter now, that we know that crime can easily be traced. Thank you. I'm your host, Derek McKinnon. Until next time. Hi.